Complaints from flyers with disabilities have more than doubled since before the pandemic, according to the Department of Transportation. The, the situation has gotten so bad that the department recently announced an Airline Travelers with Disabilities Bill of Rights to help people understand their protections under federal law. But some airports are stepping up to help ensure that passengers have a smooth ride. Special correspondent Megan Thompson reports. Pastel, On a Saturday morning in early August, Maggie Willie and her service dog Pastel arrive at the Minneapolis St. Paul International Airport. Air travel isn't at the top of most people's lists of favorite things to do these days, and it's no different for Willie. Flying is stressful. There's a lot of unknowns. I've had my wheelchair damaged. My girl. So when I got to my next destination, it was broken. Willie has a neuromuscular disease called primary lateral sclerosis. And luckily today, she and Pastel are not flying anywhere. They're taking a practice run through the airport, so both feel more prepared when there's a real trip. I haven't flown for a long time. I wanted to see what was new because it takes away some of the stress when I actually go flying. It's all part of a program called Navigating MSP. What do we do next? Check in. One Saturday a month, people with special needs can come to the airport to get familiar with the air travel process without the pressure of having to catch an actual flight. Where is the plane? Well, first we have to do our tickets, remember? The program was originally geared towards children with autism, like 16-year-old Tate Morris. His whole family is here preparing for a trip in October. We're going to Orlando. We're going to Disney. Are you excited to go to Disney World? Yes, I'm going to go on the rides. Yeah. Originally, people were kept on asking, can we come out and just get a feel for what this is going to be like. So Phil Burke, who's in charge of customer experience for the airport, launched the program for families in 2013, and then one for service dogs and their handlers the next year. I want to make MSP the most accessible airport in the world. The airport also created a Travelers with Disabilities Advisory Committee that helps keep accessibility front and center. And it offers an array of services, like a lanyard with sunflowers that alerts staff to travelers with hidden disabilities, like hearing loss, and free access to an app that people with low vision or blindness can use to navigate the terminal independently. There's a gentleman six feet in front of you that looks like he's finishing up. MSP is now considered a leader when it comes to accessibility. It's the right thing to do to make sure that we have done everything within our power to make that journey that our customers are on equitable and accessible. It's been at least eight years since Maggie Willie has flown, and she says the improvements are clear. People are more educated, and there's more services at the airport, too. Hi. Hi. After Willie and the canine group go through security, they head to the newest addition, this mock airplane cabin. It was previously used to train flight and cabin crews at Delta's headquarters in Atlanta. Delta paid to have it taken apart and shipped to MSP last fall, where it was reassembled and readied for its new purpose, educating travelers. We're going to go ahead and get up on the airplane. It's thought to be the first facility of its kind. Delta pilot Ian Barrett, who has a child with special needs, gives these tours on his time off. And we talked earlier about the best seat for you is actually the middle. Because the window seat has less foot room for the dogs, and in the aisle seat, they could get stepped on. Lift your knee up and have her just come in front of you. A team of other volunteers coaches the dogs and their handlers. Here we go. In the new cabin, Maggie Willie can also practice using the transport chair, a small wheelchair that fits down the narrow aisle. My disability changes, so I haven't always used transport chairs, but now I would need to. And having Pastel have an opportunity to practice getting in between the seats and finding her space. Pastel. Okay, down. There you go. Good girl. If she can practice that ahead of time, it's less stress for her. She gets less worn out. I get less worn out. Willie says the new cabin does more than just allow them to practice. It's acknowledging that we're travelers too, and we want to have the same easy experience as everybody else. The mock cabin will also be used to train emergency responders and the airport personnel who provide wheelchair assistance. Three. Three. Okay. My name is Rich. Uh, I'm also the father of a son with autism. Another Delta pilot, Rich Cargill, helped facilitate the cabin's move up from Atlanta, and today he's leading the other tour for families. Right. What's your name? Tate Morris. And how old are you? 16. Tate's mom, Kay Morris, says a busy airport can be difficult. 
Thank you. We never know what's going to trigger a behavior or a meltdown. For Tate, sounds are sometimes triggering. It's too loud. There's too many people. They're too close to him. Waiting is a struggle if something is supposed to happen at 1 o'clock. His expectation is it happens at 1 o'clock. And that's not the way the world works. Like today, when the real live airplane Tate and the other kids are supposed to board is late getting to the gate. Getty, the therapy dog, works the crowd to keep the kids calm. Wait at the gate for your airplane. Tate was given this deck of images laying out the day's events, which helps make the process more concrete and predictable. And you sit on the plane and you put on your seat belt. And the week before we fly, we'll probably go through it every night. The plane finally arrives. Hi, we're going to welcome you aboard our flight to Fineville, and then we'll start the back half of the tour. So thanks again for your patience and welcome aboard. What is the first thing we have to do? Fasten your seat belt. Ooh, Ooh did it get you? Uh, oh, I think it goes this way. This seat's too big for me. It's too big. Yeah. Said nobody ever in an airplane. No. <laughs> More than 1,300 families have gone through the tours, and most of them have been fully booked. To have an opportunity to get to go into an airplane, and it's enclosed, and the sounds are different, and the seat belts are different, everything is different. You can see what a bathroom in an airplane looks like. You don't get that experience anywhere else but here. After a long day, Tate is tired but his family is feeling a lot more confident about that trip to Disney World. For PBS News Weekend, I'm Megan Thompson at the Minneapolis-St. Paul International Airport.